all right so in the first lecture we are going to mainly deal with the application of activity based management so before starting this uh, <coughs> sorry before starting this lecture let, let's start with the uh, with reading the requirement okay fine let me give you a disclaimer uh, this question actually belongs to the previous stream so there is no profession marks attached to this question right so uh, it's just a simple 25 marks question Currently, these days, uh, examiner do not ask for complete 25 marks question. It keep a question for 20 marks, and then five marks are requirement for the five marks are actually dedicated to the professional marks, right? So it's a, it's a different concept, and it has been examined previously. So uh, this question is uh, this question doesn't include that those professional marks, right? So advise the CEO. So you are supposed to keep your tone on an advising mode. How to do that, right? how activity based costing could be implemented right so the implementation of abc is required how you are supposed to do that and keep this thing in your mind that this is just a four marks i from day one i believe that it's really very important to keep marking a scheme in your mind while, in, while writing the answer because you are supposed to write accordingly don't overwrite right this is the first requirement Assess whether it may be a more appropriate to use activity-based costing in timber and steel division. We don't know what is timber, we don't know what is steel, but this is some sort of uh, you, you know assessment type of thing. Um, uh, sorry, uh, assess whether it may be more appropriate to use ABC, ABC in timber and steel division than the costing basis currently used. So actually. Uh, currently used is mostly absorption costing right because ABC is usually compared with absorption costing so probably you are supposed to deal with the with this idea of you know uh, compare if ABC is more accurate compared to uh, uh, the costing system which the company is currently using right so let's see what is given in the question let's see uh, what we can do here Dibble is formed of two autonomous divisions. Now, this is a very important statement. When I'm saying, when we are saying autonomous division, this means that uh, the division can take all of their decision at their own. I mean, if they want to uh, manufacture a component, they can. If they don't want to manufacture a product, they can discontinue it. If they want to include specific properties in their uh, product, they can. If they don't want to include it, they may discontinue. Head office is not going to intervene in that. That's the simple idea, right? So Dibble is found of two divisions, timber division and steel division, and manufacture components for use in construction industry. Dibble has always, now this is important, Dibble has always absorbed production overheads to the cost of each product on the basis of machine hours, right? So machine hours are currently used as an activity level. Let me try to write it just to know. Uh, activity level is actually machine hours. Right. Okay, timber division. Timber division manufacture timber frames, right? Uh, used to support the roof of new houses. The timber which is per, which is purchased pre-cut to the correct length and is assembled into finished frames by the factory worker who fasten the components together. Timber division manufactures six standard size of frames which is sufficient for use in mostly most newly built houses, right? So try to think, try to pause this video and try to think what what can we understand from this particular concept this particular line see if the if the question is saying six standard sizes of frame that means your number of uh, you know uh, you your sizes are not going to change right and standard probably it's a it's it is actually reflecting you know a, a standard kind of product there is no not so much customization there is no nothing new coming in the product and the second idea, second point here is uh, sufficient for mostly newly built houses. That means probably in future, the company is also not expecting to uh, change its product design or requirement. You know, things are going to be smooth throughout the uh, production process. 
Steel division manufacture frames and roofs support to, for use in small commercial buildings, right? Such as shops and restaurants. So it is manufacturing uh, frames and roof supports. There is a large range of product. Now this is important. There is a large range of products, right? And many customers also specify bespoke designs. For those who don't know, what is bespoke design? Bespoke is anything which you uh, uh, manufacture on demand. For example, um, if I ask, if I go and just buy the furniture that means I, bu I bought ready-made furniture but if I go and I customize it then that means I am uh, buying uh, the company is able to capable of providing me the bespoke software something which is on demand type of thing and many customers also specify bespoke design for short production runs or for one-off building projects now what do you mean by one-off building projects it will not be required for the next projects. I mean, this is a one-off kind of thing, right? Uh, you manufacture it and that's it. You don't need to, uh, you will not be needing to manufacture the product again in future. Steel is cut and drilled during uh, using the division's own programmable computer aided manufacturing machinery and is bolted together and welded by hands, right? Steel division strategy is to produce novel bespoke products at a price comparable to the simpler and more conventional products offered by its competitors right so what is what what's given here the company is producing a customized product and the prices surprisingly the prices are comparable to the simple and more conventional product offered by competitor. Try to think what is the problem here. Pause this video and try to think. See, the problem is the company is manufacturing customized product, but it is keeping its selling price similar to the simpler and more conventional products offered by its competitor, right? So though I am manufacturing customized product, but I am keeping my selling price equivalent or you know similar to those products which are uh, regular products which are uh, which the company which is available in the market. Do you really think it's a good idea? No, it's not a good idea because if you are manufacturing something uh, customized, then obviously you should charge a premium price for that. Why you are selling it on the regular price? This is a questionable thing, right? For example, many of the steel division's customer choose. Now, here is an example. Many of the steel division customer choose to have steel covered in one of the wide variety of colored paints and other protective coatings at the end of the production process, right? So this is a kind of uh, you know uh, request by the customer. This is a kind of uh, requirement by the customer. This is performed off-site by a subcontractor who uh, after which the product is returned after which the product is returned to the steel division for dispatch to the customer right now what what this product what this process is uh, if a customer wants to cover its steel from uh, by colored paints and protective coating just to you know, avoid rust and, and, and other things. Um, this uh, the, 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 it can be done, but that is not done by the company. That is done by offsite by a contractor, right? After which the product is returned to steel division for dispatch to the customer, right? Customers are charged the subcontractor's cost plus. Customers are charged the subcontractor cost plus 10% markup for choosing this option. So whatever the cost of subcontractor is, what the company is doing, subcontractor cost plus 10% of markup. Makes sense, right? Okay. Um, the board of steel division has admitted that this pricing structure may be too simplistic and then it is unsure of the overall profitability and sales of some groups of products of uh, or sector of the market. Recently, uh, several customers have complained. Now, there is another problem. Sorry, this is the first problem probably. 
Recently, several customers have complained that incorrectly applied paints has flagged off to steel after only a few months use. More seriously, a fast food restaurant has commenced litigation with uh, a double after it has to close for a week while steel roof frames supplied by the steel division were repainted. So there is a complaint by the customer of uh, not doing the work properly at the first time so uh, you are you, the company is providing uh, reservicing to the to the to the uh, customer following this a production manager has proposed increasing the number of staff so what the customer what the company is doing what the double company is doing for this the production manager it has proposed increasing the number of staff inspecting the quality of coating on the frames and purchasing expensive imaging machinery to make inspection more efficient now try to think pause this video reread this line this point and try to think what is the problem and is company doing the correct is taking the correct step of for, for solving the problem the problem was that the coating was not done properly right because that was flacking off and what the company is doing company because this is something which has been done by the subcontractor right coating is done by the subcontractor so what the company is doing company is uh, increasing the inspection obviously because company cannot company is not manufacturing the product so what else what company can do it can increase the inspection but increasing inspection is actually the additional cause i mean we are uh, we are just uh, we are not actually we are just catching the criminals we are not removing the reason which is actually creating the criminals right so here we are also just inspecting the problem and uh, we are not trying to remove the cause of problem so that's basically the issue the ceo uh, Edible has approached you as a performance management expert for your advice. At a conference recently, I watched a presentation by a CEO at a similar business to ours take, talking about the advantages and disadvantages of using activity-based costing and how, a, how several years the adoption of activity-based cost management has helped them to improve both the strategic and operational levels. So this is a kind of hint to the students that this is something which can which you are supposed to deal with i don't want you to do any detailed calculation at this stage but i would like you to know more about activity based costing and activity based management sorry i i would like to know more about abc and abm and know whether they would be useful for double company or not now this is a very important line see the company is currently not performing activity based costing it's not using abc or abm so while writing the answer it's really very important to start your answer with a basic introduction of abc or abm whether it's required by the equation or not sometimes you are just supposed to you know start with the application process of whether abc will be applicable for the company or not but still you need to write you have to write two to three lines <coughs> for this concept because the company is not using it company is trying to introduce it so introduction in a particular uh, at introduction actually uh, require you to uh, write the basic idea of the core topic whether it's abc whether it's abm whether it's transfer pricing whether it's value based management whether it's beyond budgeting whether this is any right so you are provided with the extract of most recent management accounting for accounts for timber steel division revenues are given revenues are given material cost is given uh, direct labor is given subcontractor costs are given you know basic things are given an analysis of production overhead cost is also given right there are there are how many steps setup time for cam machinery machining time storage of course let's try to read it properly setup time for cam machinery right uh, this is the time which you require to you know set up the machinery 
machining time, storage of goods awaiting or return from subcontractor, transfer of goods to and from subcontractor, inspection and testing, and total production overheads. Right. See, these are the total production overheads. So advise the CEO how activity based costing could be implemented. This is a very simple idea. I'm not going to discuss this. First, we are going to start with this part. The assessment of whether it may be more appropriate to use activity based costing in timber and steel division rather than uh, current uh, costing system. So currently the company is using machine arts to absorb the overhead. See, uh, in the previous discussion, we have already discussed that there are few conditions required for the uh, for the use of activity-based costing. The first condition is that uh, there should be multiple products, right? There should be multiple products with the company is manufacturing. If the company is manufacturing one or two products, uh, it will not be much beneficial. If the company is using, if the company is manufacturing multiple products wide variety of products and definitely ABC is more relevant in that case. Uh, there should be uh, products are if products are different in nature, right? if the company is manufacturing different type of products, for example, one product require high quality inspection, other product does not. One product require one product can be manufactured in large production runs. Uh, you can manufacture five thousand units in a batch, and the other product you cannot manufacture more than five hundred units per batch. So it can be it can be this this kind of uh, different in product nature. And the third category which we discussed is that major overheads should not be uh, should not be. Uh, Overhead should not be sorry. If overheads are diluted, If major overheads, right? For example, eighty percent, ninety percent overheads are related to one single cost pool. It's useless to use ABC. And there's one more thing: um, overhead should be a major portion of Total overhead. This is something which we have already discussed in the previous video, the introductory video, right? So, these are few things which are important. So, let's try to apply this, right? Let's try to apply these one by one. Uh, first, let's uh, start application in the timber division, right? All right. Um, the first thing is that, uh, first of all, you need to identify whether the overheads are made making a major portion of total cost right so what are the overheads of timber the total overheads of timber is two z r two zero five thousand right try to calculate if uh, this is minor if this is uh, the major if this is becoming the major cost pool sorry if this is making the major part of your total cost Okay, so the major over uh, the total overheads are two zero five thousand, right? And if you divide it with the total cost, total cost is this one twelve thousand plus forty five hundred plus seventy five plus this these two zero five because this is also the part of your total cost now. Huh? So it's 1.22%, right? These overheads are 1.22% of total cost, right? What about the second one? Let's try to recalculate the second one. Let me calculate the total cost first. 10,100 plus 850. We are just adding these figures. Plus 650. 
plus 4472 16072 right and 4472 divided by 16072 27.8% right so uh, the timber division is actually uh, total overheads of timber division are just 1.22% of the total cost. This means what this is a very important uh, statement. This means what this means that if you apply activity based costing, suppose if we say that okay, fine company should use activity based costing, then what will happen? Your 1.22 uh, minus 100% is approximately 97.8, I guess, or 98.8, I think. So, your 98.8% of cost will remain same because that is not the overhead. Activity based costing is actually the problem of overhead, distribution of overhead. So, that will remain same. What will change? Just 1.22%. So, obviously, I mean, I mean the first uh, point is against the use of ABC because if someone is recommending it, that means you are supposed to do so much work just to change 1.22% of the cost, right? So the first point is not in favor of ABC, that is against ABC, right? The second one is what? And what about the timber steel division? Yes, steel division total overheads are 20, 28%, which is a significant amount. So let's try to uh, write it here. For timber division, it's yes. For steel, uh, for timber division, it's no. For steel division, it's yes, right? And then, um, if if the company is manufacturing multiple products, um, okay, fine. Uh, is timber division manufacturing multiple products? Timber division manufactures six standard sizes of frame, which is sufficient for use uh, in mostly widely built, mostly newly built houses. So probably the product is same. The only thing which changes is the uh, size of the product, size of the component, right? And what about the steel division? Is this manufacturing multiple type of product? Yes, there is a large range of products. This one. So, if the company is manufacturing a large range of products, then definitely and, and, and many customer cust also specify the bespoke design, right? So, these two are in favor of using ABC, right? So, the company Timber is not exactly manufacturing multiple products, it's just this different in size and steel division is manufacturing multiple products, yes. Different in nature, timber division is just manufacturing different sizes, so probably no. And a steel division, yes, because they are manufacturing the customized product. If major overheads are not related to a single cost pools, so let's see um, what is the major overhead here in timber division? 120, right? So 120 upon 205. 59% approximately, 58.5. So, the, the problem is one point, the total overheads are approximately 1.22% of the total cost. And out of total overheads, the overheads are say 58% concentrated to a single cost pool. So, obviously, this is not going again in favor of ABC. What about a steel division? A steel division 395,000 out of 4472. 395,000 divided by 4472. That is 8.8%. So, obviously, it's not major, right? So, 
if major overheads are not related to a single pool timber division it's a yes because major overheads are related it's not exactly yes but you know uh, 58% is not a uh, smaller amount and steel division compared to steel division it's a definitely no so probably steel division should continue sorry uh, timber division should continue with the uh, current system and steel division will probably continue with move to abc right but there is a problem if you see this data um, timber division try to try to identify if company continue if timber division continue with uh, the current system of uh, absorbing overheads on the basis of machine hours is it really correct pause this video and think no the problem is machine time in timber department is zero see this one machine time in timber division is zero so how can you distribute overheads on the basis of machine hours obviously it's not a good idea it's impossible it's impractical it's not a practical idea so how can you do that see um, if not machine hours then what uh, let's try to analyze what what the convert this division is doing see um, storage of goods awaiting and return from the subcontractor transfer of goods to and from subcontractor inspection and testing so mostly things are related with you know uh, storage of goods so what we can do here is we can say that okay fine company can distribute its cost on the basis of um, on the basis of uh, material cost you may say maybe material cost or maybe material quantity but not on the basis of machine hours so here we also have a recommendation that company should not use machine hours rather it may use something which is related to store department or storage of machinery because mostly overheads are related to that so for that company can use either a quantity of inventory quantity of material or the cost of material whatever company wants to do right so this is basically the end of first part right and before moving ahead let me try to show you how to write the same answer right i'm not going to read this i am just uh, opening this uh, pause this video and read this first part okay i hope you have read that see initially what we did in the starting we introduced what is the concept of activity based costing i forgot to put a full stop here right and then we can say okay fine how can we implement it we made an idea of how to implement it right um okay uh i think i made a mistake i think i wrote it two times just ignore this right okay so and the next thing which we discuss is uh, how if activity based costing can be used so there are few conditions required for the implementation of ea this is not b this is a part 2 right there are few conditions required for the implementation of abc we wrote the we wrote those conditions right what are these conditions and then we wrote uh, if company is uh, if a timber or steel division is actually uh, fulfilling those conditions or not you may read this uh, this part okay now we are moving towards the next part right the next part is what the next part says that advise the ceo again your tone should be on advising terms advise the ceo how activity based management could be used to improve its business performance in devil now while giving while asking while writing the requirement examiner is not mentioning whether it wants a strategic abm or an operational abm right but in the question it has mentioned this part 
uh, that how several years the adoption of activity based management and has helped them to improve both ABM uh, sorry ABM at a strategic and operational level both. So if you miss this line you will probably miss something in part B. So try to read the question very carefully because sometimes requirement is clear but, sorry I am taking my words back. Now these days requirements are not like this that your requirements are not actually the requirements. Requirement says that you are supposed to uh, fulfill the requirements of CEO. Right? You are act according to the requirement of CEO. So you have to uh, play some sort of treasure hunt that you have to identify what is the requirement of CEO in the question. Right? So uh, let's start with uh, what is the first part? Strategic. So let's start with the strategic ABM. Strategic ABM was what? The strategic ABM was actually the idea of identifying value added product or value added services or a profitable product or a profitable service, right? So, um, timber division is not using ABC. So let's ignore timber division. Um, I'm just pausing this video for a while. And I want you all to read this part, the read this whole steel division information again, and try to identify that uh, what can be what can be used as an strategic ABM. In simpler words, um, a profitable product or a profitable or not profitable product or profitable or not profitable service any any of these two pause this video all right so the only example which is given here is this one this part for example many of a steel division customer chooses to have steel chooses to have steel covered in one of the wide variety of colored paints and other protective coatings at the end of production process right this is performed off-site by contractor after which the product is returned to steel division for dispatch to the customer. Customers are charged subcontractor costs. Customers are charged subcontractor costs plus 10% markup for choosing this option. Right. Uh, so what is given here? Try to try to identify if something about subcontractor is given in this part. Okay, so see what the situation is subcontractor cost is 650 right so subcontractor cost is 650 and what the company is charging from the customer is 650 plus 10 percent markup right uh, let me try to calculate that so 650 times 110 percent is 715 right so this is basically the amount which we are charging from the customer right and do we really bearing the 650 cost no the problem is we are not actually bearing this only 650 cost rather what how much cost we are bearing see transfer of goods to and from subcontractor this is what sorry this is basically what this is basically um, sorry this is basically what this is basically transfer of goods to and from subcontractor is basically you are sending your um, products to the subcontractor and then you want your products back and this is this will cost you around 300,000 right and storage of goods awaiting or return from subcontractor both of these costs are related to subcontracting services right I mean those who are who those who actually wants uh, to do to have these services now what is the overall cost and see 650 is the direct cost plus 395 plus 300 right if you add these three product let me try to do it on a separate calculator 650 plus 695 is actually 1345 most probably 
so you are bearing a cost of 1345 but you are recovering only 715 right so this means what this means that the company is not recovering charging enough to the customer in order to recover all these costs right so either do something regarding it or to discontinue the uh, manufacturing right so this is basically uh, this is basically a non value added product which we have identified right how much of these marks 30 marks okay fine And, and and you can do two things you can either reduce this cost which will which we will see in um, the next concept of uh, operational ABM the first thing the first idea is to reduce this cost either eliminate this cost or discontinue this uh, subcontracting services but you have to make sure that if you discontinue because this is a kind of customization right this is this may be something which customer is actually coming to your organization for this right so if you discontinue you may lose the customer so you have to think twice before uh, discontinuing that uh, whether I mean I mean I mean whether it's it's it will affect the sales of other product adversely and you know how what will be the overall impact but if you consider it as a sole product sole service it's not advisable to continue right now what is the second part second is uh, operational ABM see operational ABM is actually what um, operational ABM means to identify the value added and the non value added product right so this one was for strategic right for operational we need to identify whether um, uh, the service is a value added or not now set up let's start with the easier one what about the machine time do you think machine time is a value added activity pause this video okay fine pause this video and try to think for all these five activities whether these are value added activities or a non value added activities all right machine value machine time it's a value added activity um set up time for cam machinery it's actually a secondary services secondary activity means this is neither a value added activity nor a non value added activity it's a kind of activity which is necessary for the production process but not adding value so obviously you cannot eliminate this but you will try to reduce this as much as possible while the machine time you don't need you should not try to change machine time because this is something which is you know uh, actually generating actually adding value to the product right now what about the remaining three storage of goods awaiting or return from subcontractor we have stored the goods because uh, we will uh, send it to subcontractor when it is required right when they want it we will send it when they have a capacity we will send it and after completing the work subcontractor will return it to us right so try to pause this video and think whether this is a value added activity or not number one and if it is a non value added activity can we remove that can we eliminate that yes it's a non value added activity let me try to clear this space if I can or let's move to this part now. Okay, fine. This is a non-value added activity. Why? Because you are uh, you are sending your product and you are uh, you are receiving your product and you are storing it, right? Let's talk these two. Transfer of goods to and from subcontractor. This is also a non-value added activity. How can you reduce or eliminate? Let's talk about transfer of goods to and from subcontractor first because this is an easier one. What if you don't want to transfer it to the subcontractor or you don't want it back from subcontractor? What you can do? Pause this video and think because you have to think in the paper. See, the first idea which can be done is uh, what we are doing, we are 
we are uh, sending it to customer and then we are then we want it back let me try to clear this part this is performed by subcontractor after which the product is returned to steel division for dispatch to the customer so what we can do here is we can send directly we can send the product directly to the customer right but um, because i was doing this in the in a class as well so there was a debate going on this topic um if we send this product directly to the customer then there is an issue what is the issue see the problem is we are actually doing some inspection uh, after we are getting the product from um, from the customer from the subcontractor right following this the production manager has proposed increasing the number of certain staffing right so we were in, we were you know we were uh, inspecting the goods right so what if we send it directly to the customer how we how can we what will be the inspection process i mean how can we carry out the inspection process think we can send someone from our company we can send uh, our employees not our employees dibble company can send its employees to the subcontractor for inspection now few students may argue see uh, the concept of professional acumen comes here because uh, commercial acumen actually uh, say start whether this uh, advice which you are uh, giving in the question in the in the answer is that practically applicable see if you send your um, uh, people your employees to the subcontractor then the problem is we have we are we have also purchased a machinery something we have also purchased an imaging machinery to make efficient uh, more efficient inspection so obviously is it possible to you know um imp- imp- to have uh, to 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 transfer the machinery from our company to supplier whether supplier will be willing to accept uh, our setup in his factory right so transferring of um i'm just discussing this and then we will summarize it transferring of machinery will can be the issue so these are the issues and 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 there is a problem see the problem is subcontractor we are doing all these efforts for the subcontractor and we are receiving complaints against his work so what else we, we can do we can try to offer the services from our own premises right so the, we, what we can do is we can start providing the service from our from dibble companies outlet dibble companies production facility if possible if we have those capabilities we can do that because that will reduce that will eliminate this transfer of goods to and from customer that will completely eliminate that and we can also see we can insist for our taking services from subcontractor only if he is doing the work perfectly which is not the case in this here the second one is a storage of goods awaiting or return from subcontractor this cost will also we can, we will be able to control this cost also because if you are if you are managing your inventory at your own right if you are doing produce if you are doing work at your own then obviously you can control the pace 
right so storage of goods to the subcontractor because if you are sending into the subcontractor you have to make few things in advance because obviously you will send it accordingly or you will get it back maybe on, on the on the due time but if you are doing everything at your own it will help you to manage your inventory right so this will this will uh, not eliminate exactly but this will reduce your storage cost as well and both of these uh, this step will also help to eliminate a transportation cost and to manage storage cost right what's next um inspection and testing inspection and testing is it a value added activity or a non value added activity think it's a non value added activity now the people student usually start screaming after listening this but my point is see the main issue is is it adding value to the product no it is not adding value to the product it's just a confirmation to you that whatever you are manufacturing is 100% correct you can pass it to the customer right but what if you manufacture see you inspect only if you if you are expecting something bad may happen so you start inspecting it if you have enough if you have processes accurate processes then you can reduce this cost to acceptably low level to a reasonably low level so i'm not saying that this can be eliminated maybe the company needs to continue with this but this is a non value added activity 425 is a huge amount 425 is a huge amount it's approximately 10% of your total cost so try to reduce it try to uh try to uh work more on the prevention part i i think you have guys have studied the concept of prevention cost appraisal cost internal and external failure cost which is the part of tqn so if you if you invest more in prevention cost let's let me give you an example see uh if we if we buy good quality material if we have a good uh, production force if we have good machinery available if production facility is good if we if our r&d is good then obviously there is no there is no chance that products will you will be you will end up making a bad product you there are high chances that whatever you are manufacturing will be perfect but if your machinery is not up to date if your workers are new if your material is if you are compromising in the quality of material then definitely there are chances that your product will be substandard so try to work more on preventive steps rather than correcting the steps okay. so this is basically the idea i think students uh, know this tqm concept so that that can be done so at strategic level this is basically something which we can which we can identify at a strategic level that this is something which we need to look at and how we can uh, and and see the problem we have identified was this one uh, these co- these are two costs which were too high so we identified that how we can reduce or eliminate these costs by using activity based costing right so these are this this was for 13 marks 13 marks means let me tell you okay fine let me tell you the marking scheme now marking scheme is this one this one improving performance using abm 1 mark per point maximum of 13 marks simple okay so you just need to identify uh, i mean we have identified five areas to be value added or a non value added right so five areas for the identification of value and non value added activity and then there is few discussion how that can be eliminated or improved so at least 2 to 3 marks for that and then the strategic level abm strategic level abm we have identified the uh, service which is producing losses we have calculated its loss and we have came we came up with a with a idea that this is not a profitable product right 
so um, and you can start with what is the concept of strategic abm and operational abm right so this is basically how we can write the same answer see um this is basically what i was trying to communicate value added at operational level sorry at operational level there can be two type of activities value added and non value added activities this is just an introduction part value added activities means what and non value added activities means what and then in the same paragraph we have identified what is a value added and a non value added activity setup time is not a value added activity i should have shown it in a separate paragraph but it but you have to keep your wordings accordingly then at a strategic level it's really very what what are the strategic activity uh, abm we give an introduction why because this is a new concept for the company and then we identified why we think that this is a non value added uh, activity non ad value added uh, service or product right so this is basically how we can write the answer see there are few things which are very important three things need to identify especially two parts the first part as i said that if you are introducing a new concept you must write its basic introduction and the second one is you have to justify whatever you are writing if you are saying that this is a non value added activity you have to tell the reason why if you are saying it's a non it's a value added activity you have to tell the reason why you cannot just write this is a value added or a non value added activity if you are saying this is a value added activity you should write that why this is a value added activity because machine time is necessary for the production process if you are saying transportation is a non value added activity why because transportation is just a cost which is adding cost to your uh, to overhead it's not produce it's not adding value you can do the same work at your own company or you can find some someone in the vicinity who can do the same work i mean you can reduce the distance as much as possible you can eliminate the transportation cost if you are working it at home so this is this can cost can be easily eliminated right so this is basically the end of the uh, first introductory session in which we have discussed the basic idea of activity based costing right uh, i hope you understood this question thank you allah hafiz